Early this morning, the settlers invaded the building, uh, the three floor building here, uh, claiming that they bought the house from the Palestinian owners, um, starting a new settlement in Hebron. Upstairs. I still don't know what's the story. Yeah? This is the first second I arrived, and as you can see, I'm already pushed out by, uh, by the police for claiming that this is a closed military zone that for some reason is enforced only on me. It's obvious that there in Hebron the story is not only settlers, the story is policy. I'm not sure who's giving orders to who, but at the end of the day, the settler community and the government and the army and the police are working hand by hand, uh, hand in hand, to, to achieve the same goal. That's what we see here in Hebron. You know, in the last 10 years, this is the first time that they're trying to take over a building claiming they bought it. Up to now, in the first three cases, uh, investigations have proven that the documents they presented were forged. Uh, in this case, we don't yet know whether there was, whether they actually bought it or not. It doesn't really matter because legally, by Israeli law, if you purchase a house and the occupied territories, you must get the signature of the Minister of Defense himself in order to complete the, the, the deal. Um, and in this case, of course, the Minister of Defense didn't really approve it yet, so it basically now lies in his desk. Um, and it's a political decision whether to leave them here or not. Um, our concerns are that we would see here what we saw all around the set other settlements in Hebron, which is the same policies that ultimately pushed aside Palestinian population out of the city center, also out of this area. So we started to see closing of roads, settler violence in the area, more military presence, invasion into houses, disrupting the routine of families around. And that's usually what happens in Hebron around settlements, and that's why we're concerned.